Viewer discretion is advised. Hidden beneath the Tower of London are several dungeons responsible for its bloody reputation. It must have been terrifying for prisoners to be led down into the dungeons where they would have heard other prisoners screaming, moaning in agony. They would have also heard the torturers and what they were doing. Torture was extremely prolific under the reign of Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. And this is because of Henry VIII's growing paranoia of people working against him. And so anybody who he even suspected of possibly being treasonous would get thrown into the tower. In the dungeons at the Tower of London, you would have had three main forms of torture. One of them is the rat. When somebody's attached to a rat, they're stretched, and what you hear is the popping sound of their joints and the cartilage as they are slowly dislocated. Your spine is being pulled apart. Your hips are being pulled apart. Your knees, your wrists, everything it would leave somebody completely and totally incapacitated. Then you would have also had the manacles that could be employed when someone was accused of stealing because one is being hung by the hands. Manacles were meant for imprisonment or to suspend somebody in a distended form. Someone's hands are tied behind their back and they're lifted up. So somebody in manacles could be suspended at varying angles that cause varying degrees of pain. And then, of course, you also had the scavenger's daughter. Like the wreck, the scavenger's daughter is used to elicit confessions. But instead of stretching victims, it compresses them. The idea of the scavenger's daughter, it's a metal frame that holds someone's hands and their feet so that they are forced into a stress position for a length of time. And it is designed specifically to cause severe pain and cramping. Perhaps even worse is being locked up in the most fearsome dungeon of all, a dark four by four cell known as Little Ease. If you've ever had to even bend over for longer than you like, you know how painful it can get. People would be locked in it for hours or even days. But it's also solitary confinement. You cannot see anyone. There is no window. And in my opinion, except for deaths that happen bit by bit, nothing is worse than solitary confinement. In 1640, torture is outlawed in England, bringing this dark chapter in the tower's history to a close. A mile and a half from San Francisco stands one of the most notorious maximum security prisons in America. Alcatraz. The nickname for Alcatraz was The Rock. Someone once wrote about Alcatraz that it was the great garbage can in San Francisco Bay into which all the federal penitentiaries sent their most rotten apples. So it had that reputation of being a terrible place. Al Capone ended up at Alcatraz, Machine Gun Kelly as well, and in a later date, Whitey Bulger. So lots of well-known criminals who had made headlines before they ended up getting incarcerated. Most convicts are housed in three blocks. A, B, and C. But the worst offenders are sent to solitary confinement, the dreaded D block. The lower floor of D block contains six dark cells. The door leading in is a three inch thick steel door filled with concrete. And when they close that cell door, you were in there in the dark. The diet was basically bread and water with a real meal every third day by government order. Some prisoners would be taken to the dark cells and they would be complaining, I have pain, I think I'm really sick, I should see the doctor. Then on a couple of occasions, when they were checked on, they had died. The most high profile guy that was there when I was there was a bird man. Well, they gave him life in solitary confinement. Now, can you imagine that? Never to come out. They did the same thing to a guy in later years, only they put him actually underground in a cell. They buried him alive. Solitary confinement is the most brutal punishment a prisoner can receive. If you're in a room like that day after day after day, it's been proven that your mind completely breaks down. 
solitary confinement isn't the only form of punishment. In the early years, you're not allowed to speak at all. The theory was it was a good idea to keep order, but it actually was terrible for the psychological well-being of prisoners. Conditions are so bad, some inmates contemplate drastic measures. To build a prison, you have to understand that the people inside will do everything in their power to try and break out of that prison. And so you have to keep that in mind as you're designing and building it is, human beings inside are very creative and they're very ineffective at finding weaknesses. Preventing any attempts to escape are armed guards who patrol 24-7 from the gun galleries, a maze of walkways protected by bars and mesh. They had holes, work stickers, gun through the window. Anytime there was a fight in Alcatraz, they'd shoot one shot, warning shot. If you didn't break it up, they would shoot you. We hated the in addition to all of these guards, highest percentage of guards to prisoners than anywhere in the country, is a system of tear gas canisters that are suspended from the ceiling. So if there's a prison uprising or an escape attempt, they can release this tear gas and immobilize the prisoners. I thought about escaping from Alcatraz. Everybody did, of course. But I learned very quickly that if you're going to escape from Alcatraz, you have to be willing to give up your life. Because if you don't make it, you're either going to drown or they're going to shoot you, one or the other.